Whoa, I, I didn't even know anyone was going to be here. Come on in. Check out my room. In this video, we are going to explain what the difference is between stereo, 5.1 surround, and Dolby Atmos. How it benefits you as a filmmaker, and why this room costs $100,000. So make sure to stick around to the end to see the final cost breakdown of where all that money is going with this gear. So we've spent years building this thing up. This is something that we're super excited about. So let's dive in. What is the difference between Stereo 5.1 and Atmos? Well, Stereo, you're just coming out of your left and right. That's a very typical old school, you know, you just have your left and your right channel. Once you add in 5.1, you have a left and a right center, your two rear-ish sides, and then your sub, right? And then so for Atmos, it's where you take your 5.1 speakers and then you can add an even larger system, usually including what's called height speakers. And those are speakers that you either put as projections that shoot into your ceiling, or I've chosen to do downward firing speakers, and I've done a 714 setup. And what that means is there are seven surround speakers, so you have your left and right, center, your sides and your rears, and then we have one sub, that's our dot one, and then our dot four means we have two front heights and two rear heights. Now what that does is that completely opens up your headroom, your dynamic range, you're way more able to do more things in the soundscape. You can see on the screen, this is the Dolby Atmos Panner. All these little green balls are what are called objects. And Dolby has invented this amazing software where you can track certain sounds as objects. And what they can do is move around in this 3D space. So they can float above your head, they can go up and down, they can go in a loop, they can go behind you, they can go around you. Whereas in a 5.1 setting, it's it's like you have your bed sounds, right? Where it's just static here and it's like a car can pass and go But now say a plane passes in Atmos, it can start in the rears and go and that sound will track when you go on to these height speakers. And so this is a super fun, crazy immersive way to take your film to the next level. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, okay, well, whatever, this doesn't apply to me, I'm a filmmaker. It actually does because essentially everything released now is in bare minimum 5.1, if not at most. Basically all new Netflix content coming out. I know all of Apple TV content is in Atmos. So you need to have some sort of Atmos mix to even start playing in the big league with all these huge Hollywood films. So look into hiring people that are able to do this for your films. Doug and I can do them if you want them, but this is something that you should be paying attention to and something you should be aware of. Okay, so at the heart of the Atmos room is the LCR. We have the barefoot MM12 on the left, the center, and the right placed on sound anchor stands. So we picked these speakers because of the precision that we get in the detail from the mid-range and the tweeter. If you watch the music studio tour, these are ones that I have spent a long time trying to find that sound, and these delivered that sound with this system. Listening to movies, most of the important stuff that you're hearing is coming from the center channel. So when you're on set, right, and you have your sound guy with his boom pole or lob mics or whatever, everything they're capturing, I'd say 95% or more, is coming through just this center channel. So this has been a huge game changer because the clarity of dialogue and stuff that's coming out of there is just bliss. It's just so perfect and it complements this left and right channel so well. And then of course down here we have the JL Fathom sub. I went with the 12 inch just because I felt like it was a little bit tighter than the 13, but I'm waiting on Barefoot to release their LFE channel and then that's going right in there. So Barefoot, if you're watching, let us know what we can do with that. All right, so over here we have on our side, it's the same on both sides, the MM45. When we expanded to a 714 setup, we had my JBL 6328Ps as the sides. I was like, yeah, it sounds pretty good. And I was waiting on them to get stock on the MM45. And I'm not just saying this, because I'm a fan of Barefoot. The difference on just the side speakers, switching from the JBL to the 45s, I don't have words to express the tightness that all of a sudden showed up on these side speakers. So each of these MM45s come in at around 7,000 for the pair. Depending on your budget, that may or may not be worth it. If you watch the Music Studio Tour video, we talk about growing into your gear. So if you feel like you're stuck with certain speakers and it's like, I wish they sounded better, I wish they were more clear, I wish they were more this, I 
I highly, highly, highly recommend these speakers. They're incredible. So that's what we have powering both the side speakers and our rear speakers for our 7-1 base. Now let's move to the ceiling speakers. So on the ceiling, we have four barefoot footprint 01s. We went with these for a few different reasons. Number one being budget. We didn't want to put 45s everywhere in the room, but also we didn't feel like we had enough room to suspend the speaker and enough body around where the components are. And the footprint 01 seemed to be the perfect size where the dual woofer is kind of far enough back that we could put a strap on and really secure that thing tight as opposed to with the 45s, we didn't want to be running strap over the mid-range or risk any damage to the speaker. And then in the other room, we have the Burl and the Trinov. So the Burl is basically we're using for its analog to digital conversion. That means if we want to get a microphone into our computer here, that can tap into the Burl A to D. And then of course the entire room is corrected by the Trinov room correction. So basically the Trinov just takes a time measurement with a, a four capsule microphone and it will uh, correct your room to compensate for acoustics and phase alignment and all that good stuff. Every single speaker in this room is equidistant from the center listening position, which means that every single tweeter, whether it's here or there or here or there or there or there or there, everything comes in perfectly. And actually when we did the Trinov measurement, we were only off on these heights by 0.4 degrees. What? I mean, I don't know how much closer you can get, dang it. Which brings me to the grace. Let's talk about that. So in this room, we decided to go with a smaller desk. We got this from Ikea. We wanted something that we could move in and out. We could switch with the couch when we were focusing on mixing. And then, you know, when the client's in the room, then we put the desk behind the couch and we wanted something light and semi-sturdy. So we went with this Ikea desk, trying to keep it minimal. So then at the heart of this station, we have the Grace M908. That is at the heart because since that is Dante along with the Trinov and Burl, that is our central control station. So that's the interface between these speakers and our computer, essentially. It also has the readout of where I'm at volume wise, so I can make sure that I dial in the same loudness every single time. And I'm making sure that I'm both dB measured and reference volume measured to where I need to be every single time. It also has a speaker readout, so I can tell what speakers are firing. And if there's a problem, then I can quickly diagnose. I know a lot of people have said, well, can't you not hear the center channel? But what you're not seeing is the perspective of, I have clear vision of that center channel with my monitor right here. And so although, it's not like perfect, it's very darn close with or without the monitor. And so typically, once we get to the final stages of a mix, either Doug or I will be driving at the computer and the other one will be sitting in the couch and that's where it's like finalizing the picture. That's a great exercise that you should be doing anyway because what you can do is have the movie playing on the TV and then you're not even looking at the project. And then that way, if you say, oh, is this too bright or is this too loud or should this come down? The person driving can make the adjustment and you're not visually seeing how much they pulled it down by, and you can actually feel out if it's working in the context of a movie. And that's actually a really powerful thing because I think a lot of times we get tricked with our eyes to be like, oh, that looks like I'm pulling too much on the high end or pushing too much on the loudness. Whereas the person driving, you can just say more, 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 okay, there. And then you can just watch and you have no idea. They could have boosted it by 20 dB and you have no idea because you're just going off of what feels right. So that's why this room is very important, especially when we're finishing films. We've done a lot of different features in here, both in Surround 5.1 and in Atmos. We've done projects for Panasonic in Atmos. They did the QC for Murder Among the Mormons in this room. So there's a lot of stuff that's very important for this room to function properly. So all in all, what's making this place cost over a hundred grand? Well, your left and right speakers are coming in at 25,000 for the set. And then of course your center is looking at about 12.5. Your sub is four, your sides are seven, your rears are seven, your heights are four for each pair. Your Trinov is coming in at around almost 11 grand. The Grace with all the upgrades and mods we've done to it is coming in around 10 and a half. The computer that we put in this room is around 20,000. The TV is three. You have a receiver. You want to make sure that you're able to watch movies in here. I mean, hello. But you know, your stands are a thousand bucks for the set. So like 500 bucks a piece. We've got another sound acre that's currently being worked on. These stands were about 250, 300. These ones are custom made stands that my dad made. Shout out to my dad. These weren't cheap or quick to make. Of course, the Ikea desk. I mean, we had to take out another mortgage to get into the Ikea desk, especially with the price increase that they're doing in 2022. 
I mean, my goodness. And then that's not even mentioning the acoustic treatment that we've thrown in here. We have these gigantic bass traps that we built. They're almost four feet deep. Deep AF, as they say in the industry. But also the cabling. The cabling, you know, we've run this entire studio with Mogami cabling. So to run the cables on the heights just down to here, that alone, you know, you're running hundreds of feet of Mogami and that is not a cheap feat. <laughs> Get it? The pun. And it just, it adds up quick. So yeah, that's the tour. It ain't much, but it's, it gets the job done. So like I always say, like Parker says, like George Lucas says, like Danny Boyle says, audio is at least, if not more than half the viewing experience. So investing in stuff that actually lets you hear stuff properly and how it's meant to be heard will completely change your movie watching experience. It will change your movie making experience. Even just for YouTube videos that are going to be delivered in stereo, it will make a giant difference difference if you learn and study. Every time I watch a movie in this room, I study what they're doing. I study why they did certain things. I study how they did dialogue in certain areas or how they balance music, whether it's in stereo or surround, I make sure that I'm always learning because everywhere around me is someone that's better than me. So I can learn and soak in like a sponge everyone that is doing things. And it's like, oh, I like how they did this. How can I implement that or whatever? So pay attention to audio. Let every experience be a learning experience and go have fun. That's what we're doing. We're having fun making movies. And if you want to learn more about in-depth filmmaking, check out Full Time Filmmaker. There's a link down below. But if you want to learn more about audio specifically, there is an entire course that Doug and I put together. There are over 330 videos in there and it totals over 50 hours. And it's all things sound related, mixing, cleaning, sound designing, whatever you can think of is all in there. And so there's a link for that as well if you want to learn more about audio. But other than that, Thanks for hanging out. It's been a blast. Leave a comment below of what your favorite or least favorite thing is. It's like, hey, why don't you get off of YouTube, you big annoying guy? Get out of here!